Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. In this part, we'll take a look at Kdenlife's timeline and how you can interact with it and configure how it works. The timeline. The timeline is how your video is going to play out. It's divided in tracks, whether they are audio tracks that won't display any image or video file, or video tracks which will generate an image and audio at the same time. The order of the timeline goes from left to right, with the clips being read in that order to generate your video. On top of the timeline, you'll notice a ruler with time codes. This represents the length of the video. This is where the playhead will be situated and move when you play the video preview. The playhead is that small triangle that indicates where you are in your video. You also get a bunch of icons above and below the timeline. Let's take a more detailed look at all this. The tracks. Tracks are ways to position your clips relative to each other. On one specific track, you can't overlap clips with each other. They have to be placed one after another. If you want to display, for example, an image on top of a video clip, you have to use two different tracks. The items placed in the upper tracks will be shown on top of the clips placed in the lower tracks. Think of it as layers on GIMP or Photoshop. The top layer is the one in front and hides the content of any layer placed under it. The audio tracks work differently. At any given point on the timeline, all audio will be played, whether it's the audio included in a video clip or in a clip placed in an audio track. This means that if you include a video clip with music, for example, and your own music track at the same time, both will be played simultaneously. Fortunately, you can add the mute effect to any clip or even the whole track to mute audio coming from these elements and only play back what you want to play. Each track has a type video or audio, and you can create an almost infinite number of them, depending on what you need. I found that I never needed more than 8 or 9 video tracks for complex projects and 3 audio tracks, but your mileage may vary. To add a track, just right click on any track and choose Add Track. You then get to choose where to add this one, above or under the one you right clicked, and select which kind of track it is, audio or video. You can also tweak how tracks work and what they are allowed to do. Here is a quick list of what you can do with them. First, you can lock a track. Click on the lock icon and you'll block adding or removing clips to and from that track. Click that icon again to unlock it. I mostly use this to lock the audio in once I've finished editing it, just to make sure I don't accidentally mess it up. You can also mute a track by clicking on its speaker icon. This means that no sound will be played from this track while previewing it. Careful though, it doesn't remove the sound from the final rendered video, it only blocks it while you're editing the video. You can also block the video from a track. This means that no image from this track will be played in the preview. This can allow you to filter out incrustations, added text or images to preview how a clip looks like with its effects apply, for example. On each track, you'll notice an LED turned off by default. A locked track will have its LED turn red. A muted track, or one that doesn't display video, will have a yellow LED. More options are available with a right-click on a track or on the small toolbar located above the tracks. This one contains icons to resize the track height and to display more or less tracks. The toolbars. A few toolbars surround the timeline itself. A big one located on top of the timeline and another one in the lower right corner. The big uppermost toolbar contains tools to interact with the clips located in the timeline. From left to right, you'll get a drop-down menu to control the compositing quality, which you can lower to make previewing faster, another drop-down to change the edit mode from normal to overwrite and insert mode, a few tools such as the select tool to select clips, the eraser tool to cut clips, and the spacing tool to add space between clips. Next is the time codes. The first one is the position your mouse cursor is in, in the video preview, and the second one is the total length of the current video. Finally, you get a bunch of tools to override insert space, but we'll look at them in another part. The little play button at the end of this toolbar can start a preview render just to check if your export settings are ok or not. We'll get back to that very soon. The lower right toolbar allows you to resize the project to fit more or less of it in the screen's width, with buttons to auto-adjust the zoom level on the timeline, as well as automatically splitting audio and video on tracks you add to the timeline, automatically add transitions, showing the thumbnails for video and audio, showing the marker comments, and automatically snapping clips to each other. The Timeline Cursor 
Just up of the uppermost track, you'll notice a small bar with time codes and a marker. The time codes are self-explanatory. They represent the length of your video in time and vary with the zoom you're using. The marker is your playhead or position cursor. It indicates where you are currently in your video and in the project monitor. Preview playback will start from this cursor when you're clicking play in the monitor or press the spacebar. You can simply click on the time code you want to bring the cursor there or drag the cursor from left to right to seek a specific position in your video. The project monitor can also be used to select the position in the video where you want to go, or you can use the right and left arrows to move one frame at a time and add the shift key to move one second at a time. Finally, you'll notice a blue bar, typically in the upper left corner of the timeline. You'll notice you can drag both ends of this bar to wherever you like. This represents the zone which will be taken into account for the preview render and for more advanced stuff. If you have a portion of your video that is very laggy in the clip monitor, such as one with a lot of images overlaid on top of each other, you can generate a preview render of that zone, so that playback in the clip monitor is smoother. This allows you to have a better look at the specific portion of your video and check if everything is ok. You can also generate a preview file to check the export settings. Set the blue bar over the zone you want to preview, then click the Render button. In here select the Selected Zone option and the settings that you want to try out. Then click the Render button and Caden Live will render the zone you selected and generate a file in the Projects folder that you can play to see if everything looks ok. And that's about it for the timeline. We now know everything we need to start editing a video, so next part will be more hands-on. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!